Good morning and welcome to this, our online worship here at Atonement. Today is the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, and we continue our Victorious series this morning. Today, God's Word is going to tell us about victorious living. To guide our worship, uh, you're invited and encouraged to follow along with the prompts as they will appear on your screen. And so we will begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worry and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. And so hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so in the peace of forgiveness, let us praise our victorious Lord. Let us pray. Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson from God's Word, chosen for this sixth Sunday in Easter, is taken from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. The fall into sin meant that godly living is impossible apart from the grace and work of God. The episode of Cain and Abel is proof. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. 
But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. And this is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. Victorious living is love. Love is action. And we love because Jesus loved us. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil, and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And this is the word of the Lord.
The Gospel according to John chapter 14. Glory be to you, O Lord. And this is the basis for the sermon this morning. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise be be to to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Father, through our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word I want to consider with you this morning is the Gospel lesson you just heard, John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. In Christ Jesus, dear friends, this pandemic has resulted in some absolutely terrible things. Many, many people have taken seriously ill. Tens of thousands, as a matter of fact, have succumbed to the illness, one of whom is a faithful atonement member. Yet we rejoice that Robert is in glory with the Lord. But this disease is dangerous. It's real. It's a threat. And it is harming real people. Another terrible result of this pandemic is that over 36 million people have lost their jobs, their their means of income. 36 million. That is roughly the population of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Michigan combined. Millions of people, not sure where the next paycheck is going to come from. Millions of people not sure how they're going to put food on the table and provide for themselves or their families. You have people who, are, who have compromised immune systems, compromised health in one fashion or another, and they're afraid for their own safety, and their loved ones are afraid for them. And this isn't even to mention things like a spike in drug use and addiction and abuse, and suicide rates. It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Yet there is another terrible consequence, terrible result of this pandemic. And that is just a general lack of compassion. A lack of respect, a lack of gentleness and understanding and patience. Quite simply, it is a lack of love between people. When I look at someone else, if I am out and about, 
Do I see them as a human being, as a precious soul for whom the Lord Jesus shed his blood? Or do I see them more fully and more completely instead as a carrier of the virus potentially and therefore somebody that I have to avoid? They're a threat to me. When I converse with somebody with whom I don't agree, am I patiently understanding, seeking first to to understand before speaking gently and kindly myself? Or instead, do I want to prove that I'm right and that person's wrong? And so I launch into a tirade and I let it rip with words that are intended to wound and to hurt. Do I make assumptions and pass judgments when I see somebody wearing a mask out in public? Do I make assumptions and pass judgments when I see someone not wearing a mask out in public? Am I my brother's keeper? The murderer asked. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Commands like this one in Colossians 4. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Commands like this one in Titus chapter 3. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one to be peaceable and considerate and always gentle toward everyone. Does that hit you between the eyes? Does that convict you? Because it convicts me. I say I love Jesus. But do my thoughts and words and actions show it? (laughs) Hardly. And hopefully an honest look at ourselves, at how we treat others, at how we speak to and about others, at, at what we think about others, even in the privacy of our own minds. Hopefully that reveals that keeping Jesus' commands is not something that's possible for us to do all by ourselves. I can't do it. I feel miserably at it. And the great news, though, is that Jesus never demands from us what he doesn't also give to us freely by his grace. Our verses from John chapter 14 tell us this morning about what Jesus gives to us, that Jesus gives exactly what we need for Christian living. Yes, these verses set before us Jesus going away gifts. And these verses pick up right on the heels of where we left off in the gospel lesson from last week. And if you recall, last week we caught up with Jesus and his disciples. Where? In that upper room on the night before he died. And do you remember how his disciples were feeling? They had troubled hearts. Why? Because Jesus had just shared with them some pretty distressing news. Yes, he was going to be going away from them. No, beginning later that night, things were not going to be the same anymore. But Jesus prepared them for it by giving them some going away gifts. 
What gifts? Let's look at Jesus' words again. He said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth, an advocate. We English speakers would probably pronounce the Greek word this way, paraclete. And that word is made up of two words in the Greek, one of those words being pronounced para, as in parallel, as in right alongside, and kaleo, meaning to call upon. So a paraclete is somebody that you call to your side to help you when you need help doing something that you can't do by yourself. For example, if I'm trying to wait, make my way through a detailed budget sheet, that's not something I can do by myself. I need help with that. And so I would call to my side an accountant so that he can make sense about, that, about those things for me. He would be my paraclete. If I'm trying to make out my will, that's not something I can do by myself. And so I would call to my side to help me a lawyer, somebody who has expertise in matters of the law. That person would be my paraclete. A paraclete is somebody who helps you to do something that you can't do by yourself. And so who is our paraclete? Who is the paraclete that Jesus says he is going to send to his disciples and he is going to send to his people? The Spirit of truth. That is God, the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus had been the paraclete, the one to help his disciples. He had been the one teaching them, guiding them, helping them for years now. But at this point in John 14, he was soon going to be going away. And so now, from then on, Jesus said the spirit of truth was going to be helping them. How? By living up to his title. By guiding them, directing them, pointing them, bringing them back to him who is the way and the truth and the life, as we heard last week. Yes, the spirit of truth would help them by pointing them to God's great love for them, fully expressed in their Savior Jesus who was crucified for them, who rose from the dead for them, all to give them forgiveness of their sins and life everlasting in heaven. In other words, the spirit of truth would help sinners by bringing them the forgiveness and salvation won by Jesus. And did you notice what Jesus said about the spirit of truth, about this new paraclete? He said, he will be with you forever. So he's not, he wasn't just going to be with the disciples of Jesus. They know he is going to be with Jesus' disciples throughout time. That means he is with you and me today. He is not going away. He's not going anywhere. Why not? Because Jesus said, he lives with you and will be in you. God the Holy Spirit is always with his people, always with them. He lives in you. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, and in him, that's Jesus, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. God Himself lives in you through faith. I mean, just try to wrap your mind around that. What an awesome going away gift. The ever-present help of God the Holy Spirit. How about another going away gift? And admittedly, this isn't just one going away gift. This is several going away gifts because Jesus just lays out some wonderful promises here in John chapter 14. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. Orphans, mere children who don't have a mother, who don't have a father, who have nobody to watch out for them, to protect them, to provide for them, to care for them. What a sad Sad state of affairs that is. 
But Jesus says, no, you're not going to be like that. We are going to be part of God's family. We are going to have a heavenly father. Jesus says, I am coming to you. You know, the NIV says, I will come to you, but really it is a present tense. It is a right now reality. I am coming to you. Jesus said, before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. He promised, because I live, you also will live. And so we hear those promises from Jesus, and we may be wondering, well, how? How is that possible? How does Jesus come to us in the here and now in our present reality? How is it that I can see Jesus when the rest of the world can't? How is it that Jesus living means I am living now? Two words, brothers and sisters. By faith. Jesus comes to us and he lives in us through faith. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 2. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. How can I see Jesus when the rest of the world can't? Through the eyes of faith. Do you remember what Jesus said to Thomas a week after Easter Sunday? Because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And yes, we have life everlasting. Yes, we will rise to life eternal on the last day. But brothers and sisters, the power of Jesus' resurrection isn't something to be grasped to be taken hold of on that day at the end. Jesus' resurrection means power for us in the here and now, in my life today. Paul went on in Galatians chapter 2 to write this. He said, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Keep reading here in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 15, and you will read about Jesus telling his disciples this, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yes, the risen Jesus gives you power to produce fruits in your life. Thoughts, words, and actions, works, all worked by the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus. I guess we could call them what? Fruits of the Spirit. Like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That is who you are, dear Christians, because that is who Jesus makes you to be, and he has made you to be so by giving you these wonderful going-away gifts. A paraclete. The spirit of truth to help you, to bring you to faith in Jesus, to produce in your life works. And some powerful promises to further empower, equip, and enable you to produce those works in your life. To empower you to live victoriously for your Jesus who is victorious for you. To live for him now. Until that day. When you and I and all believers wear the crown in life everlasting. And so just as he has promised, may our Lord Jesus give us such victorious living. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Risen Lord Jesus, many people are hurting from deep wounds. Many are afraid. There's anxiety, there's anger. We see it in the world around us and we see it in our own hearts and in our own deeds. Bring us all to repentance for failing to love you by keeping your commands to love one another. 
assure us that you have loved us first. Bring us once again to your cross where you paid for all the sin of all the world, all of our own sin included. Bring us once again to your empty tomb where you rose from the dead, proving your victory over sin, death, and the devil. Assure us that in your death and resurrection, we are redeemed and we are victorious. Now, as you have promised, empower us to live like it. Send your Holy Spirit to work on our hearts through word and sacrament to establish and strengthen us in faith, building and fashioning us to be holy temples where you yourself dwell. As you have promised, produce in us fruits, works that bear witness to your forgiving and saving love. Make us humble and kind, compassionate and caring, patient and gentle, respectful and honest, giving and forgiving. Mighty God, we pray to you for Matt Medro, who is being deployed overseas with the U.S. Army. Keep Matt safe in body and soul. Grant him strength and determination that he may discharge his duties faithfully for the good of his fellow soldiers and of his fellow citizens. And Lord, we also pray for Matt's family, Dorian, Paige, Hunter, Silas, and Rory. Grant them comfort and strength in your promises that you are with them as you are with Matt. Provide for their needs according to your merciful will. And when Matt's tour is over, bring him back home safely with his family. All these things we pray in the confidence that because you live, we too do live and shall live and reign with you forever. Hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught. Today, our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And we close with Go My Children with my blessing. <laughs>